Hello, this is Katie with Happy Hearted Watercolors. We are going to be painting bujum trees in front of a sunset in Baja, California. The bujum tree grows in only a few places of a rocky, arid climate. The only places it grows are in Sonora, Mexico, and the Baja California Peninsula. They're very interesting trees. If you are interested, look in the description of the lesson and I will put the link to look at these gorgeous trees. To me, they look like Dr. Seuss paintings, um, but they are a little bit like the Lewis Carroll poem called The Hunting of the Snark. So to start out this lesson, we're going to work on a variegated wash. A variegated wash is one in which the paint slides well from one color to another. And there's a really easy, simple trick. I don't even want, want to call it a trick. I just need to tell you one simple thing and you're gonna have a beautiful sunset wash. Okay, I've gone left to right, left to right, making sure it's shiny. And now I'm taking my um, cheap Bimart brush. It cost me about a dollar or two dollars. And I'm going the other way just to make sure there's no little holidays in there. And while it's still shiny, you can see the shine there, I'm going to take my blue, which I have already prepared in a um, yogurt tub lid with two pipettes, or three maybe even, pipettes full of water and blue color. And I always double check that my colors are as I wish them to be by using a little tester paper. So that looks pretty good. Remember that this will dry about 40% lighter than it appears on the paper now. So this is a night sky because we're making silhouettes of the bujum tree. Coming up, I wanna just go a couple inches down. Now cleaning my brush off very well, um, I'm going to grab my red, which I've also put two snifters full of uh, water into plus created my red. And here's what I've got. Again, it will dry 40%. So this is the same color and it's dry and that is what it looks like wet. So you can kind of see how that's gonna turn out. Now here's the trick. See how I stopped the blue right here? You're going to overlap your red and your blue about an inch and go side to side another quarter of the um, sky and tip a little bit just to get those colors playing together and rolling around um, enjoying each other's company. Um, now we're getting ready to add the yellow. I've stretched this paper using a um, technique that I use um, with almost every single painting, and that is to stretch the paper. Okay, now again, I'll tell you about that later. Um, we're going to overlap by about an inch with my yellow. And here's what my yellow looked dry, and here's what it is wet. It looks about the same. Well, a little darker. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to overlap, and about halfway down is where I'm going to start my yellow. I'm going to bring my yellow paint closer so that I can just go all the way down. I'm going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth just one or two times so that I have a nice uh, yellow sunset. This is where it would be where the sun is see, um, sinking down into the sky. Now, instead of keeping um, keeping on brushing that, I'm gonna rock and roll 
And the way I'm going to do that is just tip my board until my paint stops moving on the board. Here we go. Here we go. And we've got a nice, smooth, beautiful wash. And it is not completely dried. So what I'm going to do is take an angle and I'm done rocking and rolling. So I'm going to take an angle of the brush or angle the board and let my dirty old rag siphon off the color. I was going to tell you about um, stretching your paper. I like to set my paper in a jelly roll tray for 20 minutes, then lift it out of the jelly roll tray, hold it up at an angle so that it the extra water rolls off the corner. Then I take the um, paper and put it on top of a board, which is a gator board, which is a nice lightweight board that looks like this. It's got a nice thick, um, thick foam core in there. Some people say that you can make one, and I've never done it just because I wanted the real thing, and I wanted to be able to um, have the real thing. You, what you do is you take foam core, cover it with contact paper, and then you can use it to, as with the same process. The next step is to t slip a piece of transfer paper underneath your uh, paper with the graphite side down and the dull side facing your paper and trace each of the things. Now I've already done that so here we go and I'm going to use a black straight out of my um, straight out of my palette and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a little bit of yellow in that just to create a little bit of difference. So I'm going to use this yellow tub that I had and I'm going to pull from my black pan and just kind of put a little bit of black in there. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to create color unity. And when I just have that barely little bit of yellow in there, you won't really notice that it's yellow, but you will um, see with your eye that there's unity in the color. So there's my color. It's got a little bit of yellow tinge to it. I'm gonna keep adding black. And what I want to do first is create the um, horizon line. And I'm going to take a very light version of that and just go across with a light version of that same black that I'm going to use for my cactus silhouette. Remember, this will dry quite a bit lighter. I want to make sure all the colors are even. Since I did this on dry, I want to just make sure there's enough water there that it's going to be smooth and not, not show any hard lines or even any soft lines. So there we have with the horizon. Now here's what the next stage looks like. where I've painted my Buchum trees. And I've also shown you how the little branches are coming out of the tree after a rain. Up here at the top, these would be kind of an orangey red. There are the flower on the tree. And this is a tree, it's not a cactus. But I wanted to show you just this next step because it's just so easy and looks so good. You think, oh my gosh, this isn't gonna look very good because I'm going to end up with a line, but since this black is so dark, I can just cover over it and bring that cactus down into, I'm using the, uh, the solid black now, or just straight out of my pan. And 
bringing it down into the forest or down into the horizon. Then the next thing that I'm going to do is create a uh, place for these cactus to stand by, and I'll just show you, there's going to be some little grasses growing around there. And just kind of squiggled it, kind of like that tree um, form that you make sometimes called squiggledy wiggledy. And I'm taking and just using a clean brush and bringing some of that color down in a to melt that back together. Melt these guys back together so that they look like they're coming off of out of the same place. And the next step after this would be to take your toothbrush or your skinniest little brush and just listen to an audiobook or listen to beautiful music and create the little branches that are you know, grow after a nice rain in the desert. Okay, and there you have it.